Ah. Who's ready for the ultimate weights workout? Me. Always go American when I want to get in the mood. We do the ultimate weights workout today, 60 seconds, continuous exercise. I won't explain it much because it is just bang, 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 bang all the way through. Two dumbbells, starting with deadlifts, and we're going to work through 24 exercises. It's big. Let's get ready, people. Deadlifts first. So the deadlift is a huge exercise, huge exercise, which actually, if you get the technique right on this one, can be the one that you do lots and lots of weight on, the heaviest weight potentially you would do in a workout, all right, potentially. But let's go through the key principles. As you sit your bum back, you're trying to sit it back, stretch the back of your legs, keep your tummy engaged and shoulders back. Then when you get as far as you can, you go bosh, drive your feet into the floor and you stand as tall as you can. We are working lots of muscles here. It's hard to identify one way you're gonna feel it. So think of it more as a full body exercise with your priority being that posture. If you feel yourself curling at the back, that's no good. We definitely don't want that. We want a nice long spine, sit the bum back, stand tall. Really good one today just to say hello to all of our muscles. There's the beep, and our next exercise is called a bent over row. So you hold your deadlift at the lowest point you can, and then you're gonna pull your weights up. So let me show you from this side. Pull your weights up, maintain that good posture in your deadlift, squid your shoulder blades, and work into the back now. Really important that you keep your posture solid. So again, think of this as your feet right up through to your head, every single muscle engaged, solid, and it's just the glory bit, squidging the shoulder blades, which works into the back. 15 seconds left in exercise two of the pull section. So all of these pulling exercises tend to work the back, the posture, <sighs> and a little bit of biceps coming up. Okay, so stand up, give your back a little break, come into these. I class these bicep curls as a pull exercise because the biceps tend to work on most of our back exercises, most of them. So it's a good opportunity to sculpt to the guns, biceps, and keep ourselves moving. Give that back a little rest. Your core is still tight, it's engaged, but just let it relax a little bit because we've just put it through the ringer there. And now put the workload into your arms. And you should see from the side there that your elbows stay glued into the side of your body. So have a look. Are they swinging? Am I swinging, Stein? Hopefully not, we don't want to. We want to work hard, but with control. Ah. Last few seconds, five seconds on the biceps. And then we're going into alternating hinge, which is definitely the best named exercise of the day. There, boom. Alternating legs, hinging from your hip. This is definitely balance, people. Some of you may have already fallen over. <laughs> now, I urge you to dust yourself off and get back up again. The principle of the exercise is actually like a deadlift. So if you think of the deadlift exercise, we're bending from our hips, we're sticking our bum back as far as we can, straight back, stand up. We're just taking it onto one leg at a time. How low you go into it depends on the flexibility, whoop, flexibility of your hamstring. So how far can you get? I love this one to test my balance for one, but also to test whether I'm even. So maybe one leg is stronger than the other, which is normal. Ugh. One more, one more. And then we've got something called a reverse fly. I'm gonna face forward so you can really see this. Same position as the bent over row, but then pull with straight arms. Can you see that? Go that way. So same position as your bent over row, tummy's tucked in, reverse fly. Okay, much more difficult on your back and your shoulders. 
And if you're in the gym right now with loads of dumbbells around you, I would be urging you to pick up a lighter weight because this is tough. But for today, we've only got what we've got. So we're gonna try our very best to keep moving. 15 seconds. Oh, it's starting to bite now. Keep that core strong. Solid through your feet and the ground. And we keep moving, five seconds. Woo. Oh, I'm awake now. Last one of the pulls, hammer curls. Da, na, na, na. Da, na. Hammer curls. I think that's the song, no idea. Bicep curl, but your wrists now aren't like that. They're like this. So your knuckles face out to the side. Everything else is the same as a bicep curl. All right, everything else, elbows are straight tucked into the side, you're strong through your body, and you're just trying to isolate into those arms. Ah, halfway, halfway, come on. Last one of the pull section, the first block. We should be feeling those muscles now. Back, posture, biceps, should be feeling things. 15 seconds. And then I'm gonna give you a break from your weight before we go into the next block. Ah, Five, four, three, two, one. Well done, take a minute's rest. We'll let the timer keep ticking. Give your arms a little stretch, give your back a stretch if you need to. I'm sure there's some of you thinking, oh, me back on that one. But good news, the back section is done. Roll your arms. Our next block is gonna be push. We're gonna start on the floor and we're gonna work into the chest, triceps and shoulders. Much the same as what we've just done, where we keep going, we don't stop. So start getting yourselves in position because we're gonna have six exercises without rest, remember? Laying on the floor with your two dumbbells ready for chest press, okay? So when it beeps, You're gonna do as many chest press exercises as you can in a minute, all right? A minute, actually, when you do the pace correctly and it's not too quick, is long enough for about 15 repetitions. You'll know that if you count the timing of your reps. So if it was two seconds, down, one, two, up, one, two, that is four seconds per repetition and if my maths is right, and I've been doing a lot of homeschooling lately with the current scenario, that's 15 reps. That's the right tempo. But I should mention the exercise chest press if you haven't done before. You're bending the elbows, stretching up above your chest, squeezing all those big muscles in there. We've got 10 seconds left. As I said, no rest now. We keep going for the six minute block. Next one is pec fly, so I've got to come away from my wall a little bit, but you're going straight arms as far down as you can. Okay, you can stay exactly where you were. Arms straight, bring the dumbbells wide. So with that wide lever, straight arms, it's much tougher on our chest muscles. It's actually the same muscles really, we've just worked. We've just made it harder. Oh, squeeze those chest muscles. Keep your back nice and flat in the floor. Stick to that tempo I was just talking about. Two seconds each way. If you go quicker than that, you tend to lose the control. You tend to lose the effect of weights, which we don't want. We want you to feel it. We want you to work those muscles to fatigue. That's the goal. That's the goal with weight training. 10 seconds. Oh, skull crushers next. Skull crushers, love these ones. So this is a tricep one. The name suggests it is dangerous, it is, but your weights hopefully don't actually hit your skull. They come to the side and then they return to base. So everything about your body is the same position. We've not moved, we haven't moved, but we've changed our arm position. So our elbows are stuck where they are and we're pressing up overhead. 
Something that often happens with this exercise is people start swinging around and they start moving their arms, their elbows all over the place. I don't want you to do that if you want to fill your triceps. It's important you keep your elbows still and you bend just from the elbow, right? Just from the elbow. Good. Oh, I started to burn now. 15 seconds, come on. Keep that pace. Ah. Oh, my triceps, Frank. My triceps. Oh, come on. There we go. Up on our feet. Squats are next. Squats are next. Got microphone issues. Squats with your weights. So let's set you off and just get yourself up. Give the arms and triceps a little bit of a breathe, but keep your body going. Now a squat I would class as a push because as you're coming from the floor, what are you doing? You're pushing your feet through the floor. That's what I want you to think about during this squat. Push your feet through the floor, stand up nice and strong. Now we all know hopefully that a squat is a leg exercise predominantly, but it's what you want to focus on. <laughs> the butt, the glutes, squeeze them as much as you can. Push the feet through the floor, but don't neglect your tummy muscles, your shoulder blades. Bang, keep all that tight as well. Full body, really. Five seconds. Oh, no. Shoulder press next. Shoulder press. So you're here and you're pressing overhead. Here, pressing overhead. Now, you could do this, and I'm going to show you this, kneeling, if you want. And my reason for saying that is I want you to isolate your arms, okay? You can stay standing up if you want. But if you go kneeling, what you might feel, hopefully, is a little bit more strain in your shoulders because you haven't got the help from the lower body. You're taking it away. You're able to keep your tummy tight and hopefully, hopefully in the kneeling position, you don't hump. So you don't do that humpy thing, which often we do standing up. So the posture's good and wow. Can you feel that? The shoulders are burning, mate. They are burning. 10 seconds, come on. 10 seconds, oh, one more slow rep. Ah. Then it's kickbacks, which you could do kneeling. You could, why not? Elbows tucked in, press back. You can also do them standing if you're up there. You're here, but whatever option you choose, your elbows are in the side, you press away, you bring it back. This, if you get this one right, works the triceps more than any other exercise really. If you hold your posture in the correct position and you keep those elbows tucked, there's only one set of muscles that can press that weight back. And that's your triceps. This is exercise six in our push department. So make sure you feel fatigued. Come on, 15 seconds. Keep moving, keep moving. We've got this, 10 seconds. Two more repetitions, I think, two more. One, two. Oh. oh, take a minute's rest. Do that thing that you do when you've done weights, where your arms are like that. Doing weights today, Gary, yeah, I'm doing weights today, son. Yeah, how do you know? I can tell, because your arms are wider than normal, Gary. I don't know why I'm saying Gary Stein, I just am, it felt right. Anyway, have a rest. <laughs> Ignore my, <laughs> my bang average acting. I'll miss the gym for that. Gym chat, as I call it. Oh. Twist round next. Twist round next. Morning, John. Morning, Denise. Morning, Suzanne. Hello to you down there. Keep going, keep going. We've got twist round next. You need one dumbbell. You're gonna go feet wider than shoulder width and you're gonna wood chop across your body, all right? Now, you can tuck your elbows in. Where you put your elbows, where you put your arms will change the exercise. It'll change the intensity of it. It will. But the main thing with this first twisting exercise is just to say hello to the twisty muscles. 
Let your feet turn. Let your hips rotate. I'd encourage that. You can actually get a bit of a spring if you want, you know, spring either side. Just start unwinding those muscles in your body that let's be honest, we don't work very much. We should do, we should rotate a lot, but we don't. So this is to wake them up and we've got six twisting exercises to really get them going. So be ready, five seconds. And then we're going into one of my favorites where you're gonna hold it like by its ears, your dumbbell, and you're gonna go down as low as you can on one side, and you're gonna drive through the floor, bang, up to the roof. Then go the other side, drive as low as you can, bang. Keep hold of that dumbbell, keep hold of that dumbbell. Oh, keep hold of your microphone as well. She's fallen out. And drive through the floor, drive through the floor. So you've gone down, you've driven through the floor, bang come back and I want it to be an aggressive movement <sighs> drive up like you're gonna throw like you're gonna shot put it somewhere hammer throw whatever it is <sighs> it's probably more hammer throwing it than shot put but make it <sighs> purposeful make the movement <sighs> an intentionally powerful one and you should feel <sighs> your hips your glutes certainly muscles around your middle working to control the weight yeah, love that, bit of aggression. Windmill, this will be a laugh. Weight as far above your head as you can get it. Turn your feet in the opposite direction. And then you're gonna try and tap somewhere down here. This is an absolute favorite in our members club because it's so hard to master, right? It is. You might find the first time you do this, you're just here and you're just playing with the position. Where can I get to? Oh, that's enough. Come back. When you practice this movement and your body learns it, you can really get down, boom, quite far. And I mean, I'm actually a bit stiffer than I'd usually be for this. Sitting down at a desk as an elk. But it does improve, it does improve. So you might remember this to practice after the workout if it's been difficult for you. Just try it, play with it. And in three seconds, we'll change arms. Yeah. Change arms, change the direction of your feet. So the feet are pointing the opposite direction. So if your weight's in your left hand, your feet are pointing right. Does that make sense? Have a look at that. Any stretch you get on this exercise should come through the side of your body. So here, imagine that line there. Bosh. Lovely little exercise that. It's actually a kettlebell exercise, predominantly this one. We do this with kettlebells, but works equally fine with dumbbells. It's all good. Halfway through, keep that movement going and just play. Again, like I said in the earlier exercise with the alternating hinge, you might find that one side is more locked up than the other. One side is freer than the other. It's a really good way to explore your body and how it moves. So I'm a big, big fan. Three seconds. Oh, they're not as smooth as they used to be. What's next? Oh, rotational bicep. Yes. Bicep curls with a little bit of this. Boom. Boom. So it's an exercise you know, a bicep curl. But I'm encouraging you to do it in sequence with a rotation. So it should be foot, knee, hip, arm. Foot, knee, hip, arm all moving as one nice sequence. And you could actually add a little bit of pace with this one, potentially, as long as you're controlling the weight. Little bit of pace, what do you think, Stein? We'll let him have that. I've got to keep you a little bit slower today because it's not high intensity day today, it's strength day. So control is a must. Ah, 10 seconds. But when you're a fidget, like me, you sometimes want to have a little bit of pace about you. That's all right, three seconds. Then we've got one more rotational exercise, which is gonna be a rotating shoulder press. Boom, boom, boom. Same rules apply. Foot, knee, hip, arm. Boof. Foot, knee, hip, arm. Boof. Rotate. Doosh. Doosh. Think about every muscle from the ground up. What's working? 
your legs, your hips, your core, and then definitely with these shoulder presses. I mean, the clue's in the name, shoulders. That's it, 30 seconds of the twisty round to go. And then we just got core on the floor. And everyone loves core, don't you? Ah, come on, keep going. 15 seconds. I swear these weights are getting heavier. Ah. But that's a good thing, by the way. If it gets harder, you know you're working. Three, two, one. Oh, fantastic, now the rest. The last rest of the workout. All sorts going on with this microphone. Have another drink. I briefly alluded to what's coming. It's core on the floor next. Core on the floor next. So you can keep your weights nearby. Is that right? And be ready to get the tummy going. That's all we've got left. Six minutes of exercise left. Tell you what, mate, you can't get a staff, can you, eh? Can't get a staff. Where's Mike when you need him? Hey, Mike? You fuller yourself, have you, mate? Is that the word? Fuller, is that right? I don't know. At least they're helping us out a bit. At least Boris is helping us a bit. Good lad. Good lad. Dead bug is first, and it goes in five seconds. Dead bug. Dead bug, sorry, rushed into that. You're here. Your abs are tight, your lower back's in the ground. Opposite hand, opposite leg come away. Back to base. Opposite hand, opposite leg come away. Back to base. Now, your focus, please, is on what's happening in your middle. So think about belly button. Drawing that down towards the floor. Making sure that lower back of yours, that lovely lower back of yours, is nice and cushioned into the carpet and then that extension of the elbow the arm the leg that's just to add intensity to what's going on in the middle obviously the weights have added an element to this you can do this without weights it's tough enough trust me great exercise five seconds <sighs> what's next oh double dead bug next Use one dumbbell for that. Double dead bug. I just meant this. I would say to use one dumbbell just because it's safer and less likely you're going to arch your back. If you're one of those people that likes to push yourself, you go for two dumbbells. I won't hold you back. But a lot of us compensate exercises like this with two legs and use our back too much. And that's definitely what we don't want. So wherever you go with this, where however far you extend your legs, remember what I said in the previous exercise, your focus is here. It's on your middle. If you can stretch all the way and still feel your tummy working, great. Oh, that's a good one. Five seconds. Oh, great. Side planks next. So we'll go left side first, I think. Left elbow, side plank. Now, first option for side plank is bent bottom leg, hold your weight here. That's your first option, bent bottom leg, hold your weight there, that's enough. Those of you that have done side planks before, you might go full side plank. You might even add that. You might even add that. It's up to you, okay, it's up to you. All I need from you is a straight, strong body. So even if your bottom leg's bent, Okay, there is a line coming through your body whoosh, that you need to maintain. And you're gonna do that with strong abdominals, strong glutes, and a strong mind, that's for sure. 10 seconds, come on. Love handles, love this one. Love handles, love this one. Oh, oh it's desperate for the timer there. Change sides, change sides, my friends. How am I gonna do that? It's all delay tactics if you play with your microphone, it's really clever, but it is annoying me. Right, bottom leg bent, left hand, da -da -da, like that. Hold your position, number one. Forgot where I am now. Full press, full side plank if you can. Add in that if you really want a bit of extra love. 
if you're really up for it. <sighs> now, <laughs> I'm trying to hold a straight line here, but I've got my daughter's bunk bed in my head, <laughs> which is not ideal. <laughs> I hope whatever you, wherever you are right now, you have a nice comfy space to yourself. And you could just think about what's happening to you and your body. Not have fear of a bunk bed falling on your head. I hope so. <laughs> That's home fitness for you, isn't it? Do it where you can. 10 seconds, come on. Keep going. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, what's the last one? Oh no, it's not the last one. Renegade rows, we've got two more. So I'm gonna show you option one of a renegade row is kneeling and you're pulling one weight at a time here and you're keeping your tummy tight back straight. The extreme version, full plank position, feet wide, bang, bang. Whatever option you choose, your priority is to keep your hips as level as you can. And that's easier said than done. If you're wailing all over the place, humping the hip, it's no good. Strong, from your toe, through your middle, work the whole body. Ah, we got this, 15 seconds. Then there's only one more exercise today and your whole body will be feeling stronger. Ah, it will have been worked all the way through from toes up ah, ah, and you'll feel good for it. V sits to finish, V sits to finish. One dumbbell's enough. Option one, you just sit up here, bang. Come back to base. The hard option, wallop. Full V-sit, full wadgers. Burn the abs out. Who wants a third layer of option? A third option. Hold the weight by its ears. When you go back, extend. Oh. <laughs> extend the weight away. <laughs> Also check there's not a doll's house you've just smashed to pieces behind your head. 15 seconds, oh! oh I'll be in trouble after this workout, 10 seconds. They won't let me in their room again. Five, four, three, two, oh! Oh, is that all right, that doll's house? Have you survived? Yeah, I think we're all right. Whoops, wow. What was that, 25 minutes? 26, 27 minutes after the rest periods. Whole body workout just done there. With weights, with weights. Brilliant effort, my heart's actually up. And we didn't do any jumping today. So you, well done, have a stretch, go to your cool down page on the website. Make sure you stretch yourself out. Give yourself at least 48 hours recovery before you come and do weights again, full body. And then we keep progressing, you keep getting stronger. That's what it's all about. So well played people, see you again soon.